hello and welcome to this video um, so my goal for having this set of videos is just to basically have something to as a companion for e201 i don't intend these videos to replace the lectures mm -hmm. but i intend that hopefully by watching these videos um, you will probably understand things better and maybe um, as you could get to place this several times pause this and watch this several times so I hope it for, it's, um, solidifies your knowledge in the course. So I'll pick, we've, picked, we've um, talked about a number of methods so far in the class. We've talked about using the branch um, current method. So we've talked about the um, branch current method. Branch current method. We have also talked about um, nodal analysis. And then we've talked about mesh analysis, among other things. Now we've also mentioned that there's a, that's a, there's a method which could be used, which is called the superposition theorem. Superposition. So we could also use superposition to solve um, um, circuits. So let's say we have this particular circuit. So I'm going to draw a circuit down here. Let's say we had um, a voltage source. Um, linked to say a, resi a resistor up here and then we had another resistor um, down here and let's place another resistor in series with this well seemingly in series not exactly in series um, then let's have so we have a, a node here let's have another joint down here uh, let's have another source rather down here and this time let me have the source in that direction okay then let me place one more resistor over here so like we have done in class if I ask the simple question how many nodes are there here you could pause the video and and try to answer the question how many nodes are there in here so like I said um, you have a node where you have at least where you have more than two um, elements being joined more than two circuit components being joined together you have a node there so if we check this diagram we have four nodes so this would be node a we can call this node a we can call this node b we can call this node c and then there's one other node down here i'll just simply call that node g now um, there are several methods we could use to solve this particular system Let's assume that this is 5 ohms, this is 10 ohms, this is say 4 ohms, and let's say this is uh, 8 ohms. Then this is 4 volts, and let's say this is 10 volts. Now, if that is the case, um, from what we are used to, for a battery, this will be the positive terminal, this will be the negative terminal. In other words, the arrow will be pointing downwards for this. And if I ask the question, what direction will the arrow be pointing for this battery, you should have the answer to that. If you want, you could pause the video. But it's obvious the um, arrow will point upwards. So that means that we have a positive, a positive potential going in that direction. Now, for this particular um, circuit, we will take this, this node as our reference node. So we'll make that our ground node. That's partly why I call it G. Okay. So we could analyze this circuit a couple of ways. Let's assume our goal is to find the current inside this branch here. Let's call that I1. Let's just call it I1 for the fun of it. Or no, I want to call it something else. Um, let me say IP. Okay, P for whatever you want it to stand for. Let's call it IP. We want to find IP, which is the current in this in this particular branch. Now we could use a number of methods and I think I'll just use a number of methods to analyze this and hopefully that will serve as a good um, review as to what we have done. So the branch current method, okay, for the branch current method, if we want to do the use the branch current method, then what we're going to need to do is to uh, assign currents to each one of these branches. So to each of the branches here, we're going to assign a current, okay. so. For example, we could have a current in this branch. Um, let's call that I1. We could have a current going into, say, into this branch here. Let's call that I2. 
Now, if the current coming out here is I2, then we have something that is called KCL. And KCL, KCL stands for Kirchhoff's Current Law. Now, Kirchhoff's Current Law says that the total sum of all the currents coming into... Oops, okay, um, sorry. I apparently overdid that. Um, okay, one second, let's see, can I turn this off? Nope, okay. Um, okay, so I'll probably just need to... Uh, okay, let's just assume that it doesn't exist. Tells us a total sum of currents coming into a junction. Say you have um, a total of, say from i is equal to 1 up to n. The total sum of all the currents coming into a junction or going out of a junction is equal to 0. So, if I1 is coming in here and I2 is coming out here, then it definitely means that the current that is going out of this junction, we have to, if we sum the two currents going out of the junction, that should be equal to the sum of currents coming into the junction. So, we can say sum of currents going out is equal to sum of currents coming in. That's another way to write um, Kirchhoff's current law, really. Sum of all the currents going out is equal to sum of all the currents coming in. So if this is I1 coming in and I2 is going out, then it's obvious that what we have over here will be I1 minus I2, because that's the remainder of the currents. Now that current is the same current you have in here, which is I1 minus I2. So one current coming in here, we already know, is I1 minus I2. But let's leave that for a moment. We have I2 coming in here. That's the same current here, I2. Now, let's label the current coming down here. Oh, we already have it labeled as IP. So if we have a current going down as IP, then the current coming into this branch, into this uh, 4 ohm resistor, we can get that the sum of currents coming into this node B is I2. Then it means that the sum of currents going out should also be equal to I2. So IP plus whatever this guy is must be equal to I2. In which case, this current here has to be I2 minus IP. I hope that is clear. Okay. So this current here must be I2 minus IP. So that I2 minus IP plus IP will give us I2, which is what we just said. So the current coming into node C, you have one current called I2 minus IP coming into node C. You also have another current, I1 minus I2, coming into node C. Now that means that the current coming out of node C will be equal to the sum of currents coming into node C. So that means you have I1 minus I2 plus I2 minus IP, which is simply equal to, well, let me write that down here, I1 minus IP. Okay, now let's just, just, just do one more check. We have one more node, which is node G. We have IP coming in. We also have this current coming in here. Now we just calculated this current here to be I1 minus IP. So if that is the case, then I1 IP plus I1 minus IP must be equal to the current coming out here. Now if you sum these two together, I1 minus IP plus IP is equal to I1. And check that's what we had over here i1 is the current in this branch so this is the branch current method first of all with the branch current method first thing we do is we assign we assign currents to each branch inside the circuit so for the branch current method let's just take this down a little bit we want to use the branch current method First, we assign um, currents to each of the branches. So assign currents to each branch. Now I apologize for my handwriting. Now once you have done this, next thing you use is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay? So use Kirchhoff's voltage law to write out loop equations for each of the loops in there. So Let's come back and look at this. So we have, we have assigned currents to each of the branches. Next, we want to use KVL to assign, to write the loop currents for each one of them. So to write loop currents, pick a direction and stick with that direction all around that loop. So for each loop, pick a direction and then stick 
with that direction for each one of the loops so let's take this first loop here where you have the 10 volt 5 ohm and 8 ohm resistor so what one thing i would suggest so one one statement i will make is this whenever you have a current going into a resistor you have a, a voltage the voltage across the voltage across that resistor due to that current will be in the direction opposite to the movement of the current so what i'm simply saying is this if you have a certain resistor over here if you have a resistor and you have a current coming into this resistor called i if the resistance is r then the direction of the voltage across this now the voltage across this according to ohm's law will be equal to IR the voltage V is equal to IR so the voltage across the resistor will be equal to IR and the direction of that voltage has to be against the direction of flow of the current so you will have your voltage in this direction voltage which is simply equal to IR so that is for every resistor now bearing that in mind if um, bearing that in mind we can now write our KVL equation so looking at this first loop let's start say from this point we start from this point let's say this point is zero by the time we go across this um, 10 volt source now we are going in the direction of the um, of the voltage of the increasing voltage so since we are going in the direction of the increasing voltage our voltage increases by 10 volts so i started from zero we're going we increase by 10 volts so we have 10 volts then i am inside this loop over here so 10 volts when I get to this resistor the voltage across this resistor will be equal to I2 times 5 but the direction will be against the direction of movement of the current I2 is going to the right so my voltage will be to the left now I am going around this loop clockwise in a clockwise way so I am by the time I'm at this resistor I am going to the right so I am moving to the right the current is moving to the right the voltage is moving to the left since the voltage is moving to the left I am going to subtract so it could be sub minus 5 times I2. So I've had 10 volts minus 5 times I2. At any point in time, feel free to pause and rewind if you need to get a concept again. So that will be 10 volts minus I2 times 5. Then I'm still inside this loop. I've gone past 10 volts. I've gone past 5. Now I'm going to go past this 8 ohm resistor. To go past this 8 ohm resistor, there's a potential drop across this 8 ohm resistor that is dependent on this current and the resistance. So V is equal to IR means that the potential drop will be 8 times IP. The question now is what is the direction, what's the um, sign of the voltage? I am moving clockwise, so I am moving downwards for across this resistor. I am moving downwards. If I am moving downwards, current is coming in, the voltage is going up. So this will be minus. There's no other component inside this loop, so I can just simply equate this to zero. And that's our first KVL equation. Let's go to the next loop. Let's consider this upper loop over here. Consider this upper loop. We can start from anywhere. Let's say we start from this point. If we start from this point, let's assume that's zero. So we start from this point here. By the time I'm moving clockwise, the current moving is I1 minus I2. When we go across this resistor, we are going in the direction of the flow of current so the voltage across this resistor will be negative so i start with minus 10 times the current is the current in that resistor so minus 10 times the current in the resistor current in the resistor is i1 minus i2 so minus 10 i1 minus i2 next inside i am in this upper loop here so inside this upper loop i've gone past the 10 ohm resistor i keep going i keep going i don't meet any component until i get to this 4 ohm resistor i've come to this 4 ohm resistor now notice i am going in this direction in this direction in this direction i now come down by the time i get to this um this resistor i am going against the flow of current because i am going against the flow of current the voltage will be positive okay so to be positive 4 times the current coming in the current coming in is i2 minus ip so plus 4 into i2 minus ip so we're in this loop we have gone past 10 ohm resistor we've gone past 4 ohm resistor we're still going we get to the 5 ohm resistor again we are going against the flow of current so the voltage is positive 
and it will be 5 times the current coming in which is i2 so it will be plus 5 i2 and this is equal to 0 that is our second KVL equation our third KVL equation I'll write it quite quickly we're going around this loop let me start from this bottom here so if I'm starting from this bottom if I start moving upwards I am moving against the flow of current current is IP since I am moving up I am moving against the flow of current so I start with positive voltage which is 8 times IP I get to this 4 ohm resistor I am moving in the direction of flow of the current the current is I2 minus IP the resistance is 4 so since I am moving with current in the same direction I get to minus 4 into I2 minus IP then I get to my last component in here which is my battery my voltage source I am moving in the direction of the voltage source voltage source is going downwards I am moving downwards so it is positive 4 and that's equal to 0 that's my third KVL equation having written these three KVL equations all I now need to do is solve for IP okay now um, just to take note we have three one two three equations and we also have three unknowns I2 I1 and IP so we can solve this okay we can solve this that's assuming they are not linearly dependent let me rewrite um, the equation one um, down here or maybe I should actually let it be an exercise to you to actually go ahead and solve this maybe in my next video I just simply show you what the solution to this was okay so you can watch this next video to see the continuation of this um, question thank you